If you watch my videos, you'll know that I say that I went to college, which is true. I did about two and a half years at college, but I actually ended up dropping out in favor of working full time as a software developer. Rather than continuing college and burying myself deeper and deeper into debt, I decided to get into the workforce sooner rather than later. So as soon as I got my first full-time software development offer, I made the decision and I dropped out. Now those first two and a half years at college were mostly geared towards general education, you know, science, math, history, so on and so forth. However, I did take two computer science related classes, a class on operating systems and a class on C++, which were very informative, but the majority of what I've learned as a programmer has been through my own educational pursuits. And it's for that reason I consider myself a self-taught programmer. And if there was one thing that I got from college that really kickstarted my career in software development, it would be the network that I built. Now I promise you, you don't have to do what I did and go $40,000 in debt to build a network. And with a bit of tenacity and persistence, you can build your own network for free. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's this. It's not about what you know, it's about who you know. You've probably heard this before, and I would say that it's partially true. However, in software development, it's a mix of both. It's about what you know, the hard skill of programming, and it's also about who you know. College opened me up to a network of like-minded people who were pursuing the same career path as me, and it also gave me multiple opportunities to attend things like career fairs and other networking events. I would make myself go to every career fair and every tech-related networking event possible. I would talk to every recruiter and honestly, any person that could help me land that first tech job. Doing this built up my network of people, which led to interview opportunities. However, I took this a step further outside of college and even found a local coding meetup group in my community, which I've talked about multiple times on this channel. But it was through this coding meetup group that I found somebody who hooked me back up with a program at my community college, which ended up leading to my first tech internship. So the moral of the story is the more that you network with people, the more that you put yourself out there, the more opportunities that will be presented to you. I've seen a few people in my comment section dub themselves as socially anxious as this is what holds them back from going out, networking, and meeting new people. And listen, I have empathy for these people. I too once labeled myself as socially anxious, but the way I got over it was quite simple. I did the thing that made me socially anxious over and over Again, when I was 17, 18 years old, I would go to YouTube to find a cure for social anxiety. A quick tip or something to relieve my stress. And after watching probably hundreds of hours of videos and trying to apply these quick tips, I learned one important thing. They don't work. I learned that the way that you get over the thing that scares you is by being scared and doing it anyways walking through the fear over and over again. With that being said, here are three ways that you can network as a self-taught programmer without college. Number one, tech conferences. I've met so many tech recruiters at conferences, people who are practically throwing their business cards at you and begging you to apply for their job. Not only do you meet a lot of tech recruiters at conferences, you also meet a lot of other developers, people who are currently employed and their employer may be Hiring. Tech conferences are a great way of getting out of your comfort zone, putting yourself out there, networking with people, and you also learn a lot about your specialty. When it comes to networking opportunities, I give tech conferences a 10 out of 10 as their number one on my list. Number two is Facebook meetup groups or the app Meetup. I found my coding meetup group back in the day on Facebook. So a lot of towns and cities have community pages on Facebook. And on my hometown community page, someone had posted that they were looking to start a coding meetup group. So you can go to your Facebook community page and be on the lookout for that. Or even better, you can make your own posting and start your own Group. There's even an app called Meetup that is specifically made for starting and finding local meetup groups. You should use these apps as tools for building your own network. And number three, Discord groups. I think Discord groups are a great way to network, get advice, and talk to people from all over the world. While I do think online communities are a good tool, I still think meeting up with people in real life is your best option. Call me old fashioned, but I still value face-to-face, in-person connection. So those are three ways to network without college, but perhaps you aren't ready to network and you're still in the learning phase of your coding 
journey. In that case, I'd like to invite you to check out Udemy, who is the sponsor of today's video. So I've been using Udemy since I first started learning how to code by taking a course on web development. Now that particular course I used almost seven years ago is a bit outdated, but another great course that I recommend on web development is called the Complete 2022 Web Development Bootcamp by Angela Yu. But maybe you're already pretty experienced with web development and you want to learn the popular library React. When I first started learning React, I started with React the Complete Guide by Maximilian Schwarzmuller. Now this course really set me up for success by helping me build a great foundation of knowledge in React. Udemy is packed with a ton of great courses for almost anything that you wanna learn, whether that be web development, mobile development, or even learning Python. I'll link the courses that I mentioned down in the description so you can start learning with Udemy today. Huge thank you to Udemy for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into the tips. All right, networking out of the way, let's dive into tip number two, which is recruiters are your friend. Sure, you may be an entry-level web developer that specializes in JavaScript and React, and they may hit you with the, you seem like a perfect fit for a database administrator role that I have. But honestly, they have your best interest at heart. For every recruiter that can't distinguish between a front-end web developer and a database administrator, there's 10 more that can. And even for the ones that can't, what's wrong with politely saying, hey, I actually specialize in JavaScript and React. Let me know if you have any roles pop up around that. Thanks. I never understood why a lot of programmers kind of trash tech recruiters. Now, in terms of compensation, you may find higher paying or better opportunities on your own, but this video is about landing your first job. So in that case, I would highly recommend leveraging or using recruiters. After my first coding internship that led into a part-time job, I had a recruiter reach out to me for a full-time software development role. Now this particular position wanted three to five years of work experience and a bachelor's degree. I had about one and a half years of working experience and no degree, but because I went through a recruiter, I basically had someone who could vouch for me and get me in front of people to actually interview. Had I applied for this position on my own, there is a good chance that my application would have been filtered out. And even though I didn't meet all the criteria in the job description, I ended up passing the interview and landing the job. And this really taught me two things. Number one, you shouldn't pay too much attention to job requirements. Now the language and tech stack and the particular work that you'll be doing, yes, that is important and you should pay attention to that. But this position was the classic entry level that wanted three to five years of working experience. And if I would have seen this job on my own, there's a good chance that I wouldn't have even applied because of this ridiculous entry level requirement. And the second thing that this experience taught me was that recruiters are your friend. This was my first real full-time coding job. Before this, like I said, I was at an internship slash part-time job and I was making $12 an hour. I didn't realize how valuable I actually was and this recruiter helped me realize that and after landing this job, I more than doubled my hourly pay. Now, the only reason that this recruiter reached out to me in the first place was because I had a LinkedIn profile and I had my part-time job experience on that LinkedIn profile. And as somebody with zero job experience, you should definitely make a LinkedIn, take a professional photo and write a detailed summary of yourself and what you offer. But chances are you may not have many recruiters in your DMs. The thing is, had I recognized my value earlier, I would have taken the initiative to reach out to recruiters on my own, which is what I recommend that you do. Go to LinkedIn and type in IT recruiter, tech recruiter, programming recruiter, or whatever keyword that you see fit and DM them. These people are constantly looking for new programmers to fill job roles. And when you DM them, make sure you write a detailed summary of yourself, the skills that you've acquired, perhaps a link out to your portfolio or a proof of the work that you've done and make sure that it's well-written and professional. Now there are two types of recruiters that you will run into, one that works for an agency and one that recruits for their own company. In the case of the latter, make sure you're specific in why you want to work for that company. Also, when you DM recruiters, make sure you have a polished resume. A big bonus in working with recruiters, typically recruiters for agencies, is that they will help you lay out your resume and they'll often proofread your cover letter and your resume in general. They are incentivized as presenting you in the most professional way possible because when you get hired, 
they get paid. And for tip number three, or just general advice, when applying for jobs, messaging recruiters, so on and so forth, you really need patience. You can often take hundreds and hundreds of applications, dozens and dozens of interviews before you finally land that first job. Anything that is worth having is going to be a bit of a struggle. So remember that and remember that you need patience. Anyways, that is it for this video. If you've made it this far, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.